Hey guys, um, welcome to HSC Biology and today I'm going to be talking about chemistry and uh, comparing the button cell and dry cell. Uh, this is going to be pretty brief and it's all material that I've pre-prepared. I'm sorry for not uh, giving you guys good chemistry videos, it's just that I just don't feel like chemistry, <laughs> nor, nor is it my strongest subject. But uh, here I go. Okay, so first off, um, we're going to be comparing the button cell with the dry cell and this is a button cell. In this button cell, there are a couple of things you guys need to know layer-wise. Uh, it's just something that you can keep in the back of your head. We've got the anode cap, we've got the can, we've got the gasket, we've got the separator, cathode and anode. The main thing you need to really notice is the cathode and anode. Okay, and as you can see uh, over here, originally um, these cells are actually made to be used in pacemakers, but ever since it's been used in multiple things like, you know, cameras and remotes in in, you know, everything. Uh, everything which is like really small and needs something really small to pr uh, provide energy. Okay, so let's go into the chemistry of this uh, button cell. So these are the these are the half equation and full equations. Uh, that's the cathode reaction and that's the anode reaction. As you can see, it's just uh, th these two things, blah, blah blah, all that. The reaction. Uh, you can remember this by heart, or you can learn it yourself. What I'd recommend is just write out the word equation and just try and remember it and just figure it out because I'm pretty sure that you do need to remember this stuff but anyways I'm gonna quickly move on to cost and practicality as I said this lesson is gonna be really quick I, I don't have much time nor do I like the subject uh, just wanna share what I know or what notes I've made okay so cost and practicality uh, silver is an expensive metal uh, that that's true everyone knows that silver AG is pretty expensive okay then moving on the production of the cell is therefore expensive obviously it's non rechargeable Small. It's oh, okay. This is the practicality. It's small and light. So that's that's a positive, and all these are negatives. It's small and light, and as well, it has a relatively long lifespan. Well, yeah, that those are all correct, and that's basically all you need to know for cost and practicality. If you're arguing a a discuss question, you can use these in your points for for and against. Okay, now it it actually does have quite quite some impacts on society and in the environment. So I'll just uh, quickly dictate them to you. Uh, due to its sort of small size, it is allowed for the production of small electrical appliances. As I said, you got the pacemakers, you got the remote uh, TV controllers, and all that stuff, and um, all these small appliances, appliances which have been released because of this, you know, innovation, and it's used as innovation in the appliance. Okay, then due to the non-toxic nature, it is allowed for it to be uh, used inside the body. So um that 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 links back to the thing when I said oh yeah you can use these in pacemakers. Well originally these were actually made for pacemakers and that's what it's relating to. Since it's non-toxic, you can use it inside the body. Okay, so the environmental impacts. All right, some environmental impacts are mostly because of its unrechargeable nature and because of its because of that nature, it has to be discarded or recycled after only one use. And as we said, this is an unrechargeable battery in the practicality sense and it needs to be recycled or discarded. Potassium hydroxide that is found within the cell is caustic which means it, it causes corrosion and there's no highly toxic materials that will harm the environment so that, that, that can be used for for and against and whatnot. Okay, awesome. Let's move on to the next bit. Uh, sorry for the really shoddy... Uh, sorry about that. Let's just move up. Okay, so we've got the dry cell slash alkaline cell. Uh, that's what they refer it to. And this is a simple diagram, just to contrasting the one that I put for the button cell. Okay, so you've got the carbon, which is the graphite electrode, electrode surrounded by a carbon, carbon black and magnesium dioxide in the cathode over here. This little bar here. And then you've got the non-conducting tube here, and the ion transfer, which is accomplished by a paste of amo ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. Okay, so um, one thing I, I just like to quickly point out, in an alkaline cell, this is moist. The, the paste, which is uh, the, the salt bridge, as uh, we call it, or the ion transfer, uh, the, the paste, is it's moist. Uh, unlike other cells, which, is, which isn't moist. So in this one, it is indeed moist. And that's the key difference in the salt bridge. And then moving on, it's got a zinc metal sleeve, uh, which is the anode. Okay, awesome. The as you guys know, Duracell, uh, they make these type of batteries. You see them every day, just normal AA batteries from Duracell. They're alkaline cells, 
and that's pretty much pretty much it so let's move on and now the chemistry I'm not gonna go into it you guys can just remember this quickly I wanna keep this video short it's just the chemistry that you guys need to know as per the syllabus and then we've got the impact on society oh, can I note that if you guys are ever gonna do a question on one of these type of uh, batteries or whatnot what I've actually heard from a lot of people is that you should include it and including my teacher she's told me this that you should include this stuff inside describing the actual cell because that will prove to the marker that you actually know a bit about the cell and you know that it in chemical senses so that that's something you guys need to do in any question that requires describing and has a chemical equation related okay so the impact of society uh... due to its low constant voltage it is used for common appliances such as torches toys and portable radio slash cds just like the other one it's it's just it's it's used commonly in appliances that's all you need to remember and uh... you can just think back oh yeah what do i use double a batteries in and then just quickly jot that down for examples and then we've got due to mobility portable items like flashlights could be used therefore increasing the development of electrical equipment slash devices yeah that again you can just remember off the top of your head or general knowledge the popularity of batteries have increased well <laughs> yeah you know no shit but anyways i'll go down to the next bit cost and practicality it's very cheap form of pace is very convenient being very transportable small and easy to store and use maintains oh wait and use maintains a steady voltage therefore they are good for a range of, of electronics such as torches walkman and toys yeah i forgot to tell you guys that um the alkaline battery what it actually does is that it it, it maintains a pretty steady voltage of like something like 1.56 volts and unlike the other battery right where um you you lose the vo you lose um electrical current to the actual well Okay, suppose you're playing a Game Boy and you had those um, those really crappy batteries or whatever, and they weren't alkaline batteries. And when you put them in, the Game Boy stops working, even though you know that the battery still has some juice left into it. But um, you can't do anything about it because the Game Boy stops working. You turn it on, it, it stays on for like a second or two, and then turns off again. Well, in this case, alkaline batteries they produce a, a constant 1.56 volts. So what that means is that the actual battery doesn't um, doesn't stop working till most of the juice is pretty much gone. Okay, so what else? All right, it has a short life and it cannot deliver a high current, but and as well, battery may leak. But um, as I said, it is uh, it maintains a steady voltage and therefore it's good for a range of uh, electronics such as torches, Walkman, and toys. Okay, environmental impact. Small amounts of zinc are not problematic. However, large amounts of zinc is a threat. Well, yes, we know that obviously and then we've got McNeese is also a heavy metal disposed in large quantities are not beneficial for the environment so those two things are pretty much against the um, production and it's just something that you need to know and something that I just uh, tend to you know briefly go over that concludes the entire thing for the comparison of a button cell to a dry cell and I hope I helped thanks